Who who serves to benefit from people engaging in shamelessness? This is a the final point that I want to make. Because we talked about how you are violating yourself so you don't benefit by engaging in shamelessness. Shaitan benefits, that's in what he wants, right? Shaitan wants you to follow in his footsteps so that you can end up where he ends up. He will end up who else benefits? Okay, what are what are the what's the impact of shamelessness? If you create godlessness in society, it has a lot of different impacts. Number one is consumerism. Consumerism. If you're habituated to indulging your lusts and your desires, and you lose that kind of self control, then you're going to be more likely to want to buy. You're you're going to be more likely to want to consume you're going to be more likely to seek comforts, to seek convenience, right? Because you have this kind of need for instant gratification. You're habit you've habituated yourself to anytime you feel a desire, anytime you feel a need, you want to sate it. You want to reach a state of satiation of that desire. So that's going to feed consumerism. Who's benefiting from consumerism? All of these different corporations and the governments and the power structures that benefit from that kind of consumerism. Why do we see the kind of uh, materialistic consumerism in society around us? Well, you won't have a very good consumer as someone who refrains from their desires refrains from wanting to satisfy those desires as soon as they feel, as soon as he feels it, that's a bad consumer, right? So there's an interest, a vested interest in getting people, corporate interest, to getting people to satisfy and habituate, habitually satisfy their desires, no matter what those desires are. You're also creating an individualistic society, and an individualistic society is much easier to control, right? Why? Why is an individualistic society more easy to control? Very simple. Would you rather go against a community of uh, close people who love each other, are loyal to each other and committed to each other, sacrifice for each other, protect each other, uh, defend each other? Would you rather go against a community like that? Or would you rather go against individuals by themselves who are alone on an island? Who is easier to conquer? Who is easier to control and manage? The individual. The isolated, lonely person is going to be much easier to push around as opposed to the community, the family, even strong families, strong communities. That's what it means to be a strong community. But a strong being part of a strong community means you will sometimes sacrifice your own desires for the benefit of your community. Being part of a strong family means each person in that family is willing to sacrifice their own desires, their own ambitions, their own wants and, and feelings for the benefit of the family. That's what makes a strong family. That's what makes a strong community. So pushing individualism onto people and making them think in terms of me first, nefsi, 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 making them think in that way benefits the powers that want to pull people, push people towards Satanic ends. Shaitani ends. This is individualism. Okay? So consumerism, individualism. Also, another huge goal of getting people to indulge in their desires is exactly what we mentioned earlier about Furqan. If people lack taqwa, and they have left taqwa, then they're no longer go going to have that furqan, that ability to judge right and wrong. This is this serves people. This serves the evil powers that be. Because if people are not going to recognize their evil, 
then they can do whatever they want without any kind of resistance, without any kind of protest. Right? And you have, we see that. You see all kinds of evil deeds, evil actions that are being done by people at the highest levels of power. Look at Donald Trump, right? Look at some of these politicians and the kinds of shamelessness and wrong actions that they do. Very wrong actions. Stealing from people. Oppressing people. But where is the resistance to that? Why aren't people resisting that? Why aren't people protesting that? Why aren't people uh, showing that this is not acceptable? And this is not always, this wasn't always the case. This wasn't always the case. In Islamic society is the best example. My dad will tell me examples of how, um, for example, there would be a certain kind of, in a city like Shiraz, which is where my dad uh, grew up, and Shiraz is the second largest city in Iran. Basically, there were uh, there was one main, uh, I think it was onions or maybe rice. Okay, one distributor of rice. All of the rice that was sold in Shiraz went through that one distributor. And one day that distributor decided, look, we can make a lot more profit here if we raise the price by 50%. Okay? It was purely a profit motive. So that's what they did. They raised the price 50% unjustly because now rice is a staple. Rice is a staple in Iranian cuisine. Everyone eats rice um, with their food. And if you raise the price of it unjustly, then that means some people will go hungry because they can't afford it anymore. If they were at the poverty line, suddenly they're below the poverty line because of the price gouging. So this is an unjust act. What happened there? There was a huge protest. People stormed that distribution facility or plant. The people stormed it and demanded that the price be returned to the uh, just price. People took the issue into their own hands, right? And everyone agreed. It wasn't like some people were, were trying to justify what these uh, biz greedy businessmen were doing. No, because everyone recognizes that this is something that is wrong. This is something that's evil. You're creating injustice. So if you take this sense of right and wrong from people, this sense of just and unjust from people, then this gives evil people the green light, they don't have to worry about as much resistance and protest because most people don't even understand that what they're doing is wrong in the first place. And then the second thing is that people who are indulging in their desires are going to be less likely to speak out against evil themselves. Even if they recognize it, they're going to be either too lazy because they've lost that kind of energy. They've lost that kind of energy, nishat, right, uh, to protest and to speak out they they are they have some kind of kesal right this kind of laziness because of their violations of the commands of allah they are just indulging themselves decadence this kind of decadent result but then another factor is that when you yourself are committing sins then you're also less likely to call out sins and to criticize other people for their sins. This is a big problem. This is a big problem. And some Muslims have the wrong idea about this. Just because you commit sins, we all commit sins. Just because you commit sins does not mean that you have to be silent and you can't say something against others committing sins. Right? Right? Even, you know, you might, someone might drink alcohol, okay? They're privately in their rooms or in their homes drinking alcohol. As a Muslim, okay, this is a sin. Should that person then be silent on the issue of drinking alcohol? If that person sees others drinking alcohol, should he stay silent? No, he should speak out. 
Say, this is wrong. We shouldn't be doing this. I'm, and he's speaking to himself just as much as he's speaking to everyone else. This is how the believer is. Okay? The believer has sins, but those sins are private. He's not advertising them. He's not openly promoting it. And in fact, he's speaking out against the sin. Because this is ha what having uh, making tawbah means, right? So Muslims, uh, we have to be clear on this kind of distinction. Just because you're committing a sin, you also have to, if you recognize it as a sin, that's great. Then that means you're going to ask for forgiveness. You're going to make tawbah. And Allah will forgive you bi'ithnillah. Okay, so this is how the indulgence and sinfulness is infecting society and is causing all kinds of harm and ultimately leads to the destruction of civilization. You have people who are manipulating humanity by encouraging them to indulge in their desires. You have an entire philosophy, liberalism, that is doing this, that is encouraging this, engage, indulge, do all kinds of fahisha, but it's okay. Creating individualism, creating materialism, consumerism, nafsi, nafsi, everything is about the individual. This is how civilization is destroyed.